The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, ninth chapter, text number 26 and 27, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on December 16th, 1966, in New York. Patram Pustam Palam Tuyam Jumi Bhakta Pradishati Tadahang Bhaktiya Purhitam Ashnami Pradipapana. Now, the Lord Krishna says that anyone who offers me in devotion these four things, Patram Pustam Palam Tuyam, a bit of leaf and uh, a bit of flower, a little fruit and little water. Uh, so he is pleased to take, except why? Because we are offering him with devotion and love. That is the only thing. Just like <clears throat> uh, if you offer me uh, varieties of food stuff, uh, and very palatable dishes. <coughs> but if I am not hungry, then all these palatable dishes and varieties of foods are useless. Uh, I cannot accept anything. Similarly, if you offer anything to the Supreme Law, He is full. He does not require your offering. He is always being served by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. Lakshmi, Sahasya, Sata, Sambhrama, Sebhavana. Uh, we are in the material world, we are seeking the favor of goddess of fortune. But in the spiritual world, hundreds and thousands of the goddess of fortunes, they are eagerly trying to serve the Supreme Lord. So, he is full. He has nothing to accept from you. But he likes that you should offer him something. Uh, just like a rich uh, father, uh, he does not like any help from the son. But if the son, after he's grown up, he's earning, and if you offer something to the father, oh, he becomes very happy. <clears throat> this is natural. So, our connection with the Supreme Father is like that. Uh, he is not in want. He does not require anything from me. But it is for my interest. If I offer something, then uh, I become uh, a very pet son of my Father. Uh, <clears throat> this is called Bhakti. This is devotional service or Krishna consciousness. And why should we not offer? Then we are in gratitude. Suppose the father is supplying everything, and if I do not offer anything to my father, is it very good business? No. So, yeah, the ultimate, even the poorest of the poorest, he can offer these four things. Otherwise, uh, if you have got means, oh, you should prepare very nice food stuff uh, for the Lord. And in them, in, at Vrindavan, <coughs> in India, oh, there are temples still. They are spending thousands and thousands of rupees uh, for uh, palatable food stuff offering to the deity. And those foodstuff are distributed uh, to the, um, I'm to say, the devotees. No, not only the devotees, even non-devotees. Come and take. Uh, because by eating one shall be devotee. Uh, nobody shall eat. If I, if I ask somebody, please come and hear Bhagavad Gita, uh, he may not agree. But, if I offer some palatable dishes, food stuff, Krishna prasad, so everyone will accept. Uh, everyone will accept. So that is one of the process of devotional service. 
that uh, we should offer very sumptuously to the Lord and the prasad should be distributed. The Lord is not taking away to his abode, to his kingdom. It is for you. But if you eat and if you distribute that that sort of prasadam to the public, you are doing great service and the public is getting spiritual consciousness, God consciousness. Just establish, just propagate this everywhere, in the hospital, in the charitable societies, in industrial places, everywhere. Distribute this prasadam and chant this Hare Krishna. Just see what is the result. Uh, you want peace. These are the process of peace. Uh, but we do not take care of this. What is peace? Bhaktaram Jagadavasam Sarvaloka Mahasaram, just we have discussed previously. We should simply acknowledge uh, <coughs> there is a process of uh, uh, worship of the Ganges. You have perhaps heard the name of the Ganges River. The Ganges River is the sacred river. Ganges and the Jamuna, the most two sacred rivers in India. Uh, millions of people take bath early in the morning in these two rivers. All parts of the country, this very wide and very long river from Himalayan to the Bay of Bengal. So it is a very long river, and all the tracts of land, they are considered the sacred place, and in each and every part, thousands and thousands of people, they are taking their bath early in the morning, either in the winter season or in the summer season. It doesn't matter. So there is a process of worshipping the river Ganges. And what is that? After you take your bath, you stand uh, up to your waist, uh, filled up with water, and take little water from the Ganges water, and you offer Mother Ganges, I am offering this uh, respect. This is the process. Now, <clears throat> suppose you take a handful of water from the Ganges. What is the loss of Ganges water? And if you offer some handful of water in the Ganges, what is the gain? So, this patram pusmam phalam tuyam, a bit of uh, flower, a bit of uh, I mean, uh, fruit, and a bit of uh, leaf, if you offer to the Supreme, do you mean to say he gains something? Or if you take it out of nature, so you are taking so many things. Is he in loss? So he has no gain or loss. It is for your interest. When God accepts, he says, yes, I asnami, I eat. Uh, one Arya Samajist, you say, <clears throat> in the uh, Hindu uh, society, since very long time, especially uh, since the days of India's disruption of the original culture. So many offshoots, they have come out under the name of so many isms. So <clears throat> there is one section who are called Arya Samadhis. Their business is only to criticize all the scriptures. That is their business. So one of the members of the Arya Samadhis, uh, he, they do not favor the temple worship. So he asked me, uh, Swamiji, do you think God eats? Uh, I said, yes. Uh, and how do you think? And because God says I eat? Here is Krishna says, Asnami. No, God says I eat. So who are you that he does not eat? I replied him like that. Who are you? You say that God does not eat. But here God says, I eat. So whom shall I believe? A loafer like you or Krishna? <laughs> I am a third person, and you are also a third person, and Krishna is recognized, the Supreme Person of God, whom shall I believe? I am, and let me, let you, 
I accept that I am the uh, fool, number one. But whom shall I accept? You or Krishna? You say that, you know, what, what, are you, you are, what is your position? You are an ordinary man. You say that God does not eat, but God says I eat. So why shall I not believe? So this is the question of faith. This is the question of faith. And without faith, you cannot uh, reach the kingdom of God. Your experimental knowledge, your so-called defective reasons and arguments and philosophy, that will not be applicable in the transcendental field. Uh, you have to believe. Uh, you, are, you are believing in every sphere of your life. Uh, when you purchase a ticket for transferring yourself in the aeroplane, if you go on arguing whether shall, uh, I am purchasing the air, whether this aeroplane will reach, whether it will not, uh, I mean, it's crash in the way, if you go on arguing, then there is no question of, I mean, sir, getting on the aeroplane. You have to believe. That aeroplane will take me to the other side. Uh, you are doing that. Uh, there is no argument. So similarly, you have to believe. You, have, you must have faith. And we see that many faithful, uh, great acharyas and devotees of the Lord, they achieve success by this faith. Why shall I not follow them? Uh, therefore, uh, the Vedic literature says that you have to follow the footprints of great acharyas. Uh, acharya means great devotees who come to teach the people in general about God consciousness or Krishna consciousness. He is called acharya. He behaves in his life how to think of Krishna and he teaches his students about that. He is called Achar. Achinati Shastrani. He knows the purpose of the scriptures and he behaves in his life and he teaches his students in that way. He is called Achar. So we have to, in Bhagavad Gita, in the thirteenth chapter, you have read it uh, uh, that Acharyupasanam, Acharyupasanam, you have to approach Acharya. That is the way of learning transcendental knowledge. Then all Vedic teach. That the jnanatham sa gurumeva avigacet. If you want to learn that transcendental science, then you have to approach the bona fide spiritual master. That the jnanatham, that means that transcendental, vijyan means science. If you want to learn, so the Vedic literature uh, teaches us to accept the authorized bona fide spiritual master acharya. Uh, the Krishna is the head of all acharyas. He is the principal acharya. Uh, from Krishna, Brahma learned this Vedic literature. From Brahma, Narada learned this Vedic literature. From Narada. Vyasde, from Vyasde, Madhya Acharya, from Madhya Acharya, so many. In this way, the parampara system, the Acharya system is coming down. So we have to believe that. Mahajana uh, Jena Gatasta Pantha. You have to follow the footprints of Acharya. Uh, not only in the, uh, everywhere, the footprints of Acharya are followed. Just like in your country, you are following the footprints of Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. That is the way, uh, or any acharya, uh, because the acharya they come here to teach us about Krishna consciousness or God consciousness. That is their business. Uh, they have no other business. Uh, that is bona fide acharya. If somebody claims that I am God, then he is fool number one. Uh, at once reject him. One who teaches about the message of God is oh, is Acharya. So the Vedic literature teaches us that Tatko Pratishtha in a spiritual matter, you cannot argue. Your argument will be failure. 
because you may be very good arguer, but uh, I may come, I can cut all your arguments. And somebody else comes, he cuts all my arguments. It is the question of logic. So uh, there are many logical experts. So by arguments we cannot reach the supreme truth. Not by purchasing books from the market and reading it. No, that also will not help you. If you purchase Bhagavad Gita, you purchase Barbell, you purchase Quran, there are so many, there are literatures, they are also authorized. That's all right. But you cannot learn them by your own study. One must go and learn it from the spiritual master. Exactly. You purchase from scientific book, medical science or engineering and study at home. Oh, you will not be never be acknowledged as a medical practitioner. You have to admit yourself into the, oh, the disciple success and medical college. Oh, you have to attend lectures. Then when you pass degree, then you will be admitted. So, sutayo vibhinna, anasu munijya samatamana vinnam. And if you consult different kinds of philosophers, you will be that. But one philosopher is giving one opinion and another philosopher is giving. Because, nasu munijya sa, if a philosopher is not philosopher, if he does not cut another philosopher. That is going on. Nasu munijya samatamana vinnam, dharma satatang nitam gohaya. Therefore, the purport of uh, a spiritual life is very confidential. And how I can learn? Mahajana Jinagata Sabantha. Therefore, we will accept the footprints of those recognized Acharyas. Acharya Upasana. So, Krishna is the uh, best and foremost Acharya, and he is. He, accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead in India, all, I mean, the schools of, I mean to say, transcendentalists, uh, the impersonalists and the personalists, all of them, they have accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. There is no doubt about it. So here, the Lord says Himself that I eat. Uh, so we cannot say that He does not eat. Uh, he does not eat in in my uh, in favor of my conclusion. There is no evidence, but uh, here is the evidence, accepted evidence. The God eats. If God eats, then why don't you offer him to eat? What is the harm? Uh, what is the harm? If you are little and fruits and flowers offered to God, he accepts it, why don't you offer it? Uh, you want to please so many, you flatter so many bosses by supplying good dishes and so many things. Uh, why don't you try to please God? What is the harm? Is there any loss? You are eating every day and before eating, if you offer to God, what is the harm there? Why do people do not take this formula? Huh? And see the result. If actually God eats from your hand, oh, how much advanced you become in spiritual life, you do not know. He accepts your things from your hand. How much fortunate you are. Huh? So here is it. Oh, it is clearly said. Tadhaṁ asnāmi, asnāmi the Sanskrit word means I eat, I eat. Why? Bhakta Apurhitam, he has brought with devotional love. So you try to love God. Ah, you become a lover of God and offer Him whatever you eat, whatever you do. Ah, then see the result, how peaceful you become and how the world becomes peaceful. Ah, simply by theoretical resolution. You can make peace in the world. Uh, now resolve. We shall not fight. Oh, next moment we are fight. Uh, in Esco, resolution is going on for the last 20 years. And where is the peace? Uh, 
That is not the way of free. Here is the key. Try to establish your lost relationship with Krishna or God. And then there will be peace. Now, Krishna says in the next verse, Jat karosi, jat asnasi, jat juhosi, jat asi jat, jat tapasasi kauntiya, tat purusha madarpana. Now, every human being, he has got a philanthropic view. Now, the other day I met one gentleman, so I did not know that he is not a family man, because uh, in India, we are supposed to accept anyone, any gentleman as family man. So he said, yes, I am not family man. Uh, then what he is doing, he is earning nicely, but he is helping one orphanage. That's nice. Well, he said that I have got many sons in this orphanage. And that is very good. So <clears throat> this natural inclination for uh, loving a orphanage is there. Uh, is there. So this give and take, this uh, inclination is there in the human being. Uh, the Lord says that just karosi and we have to work. It is not that without working we can uh, have our body and soul maintained. This is not possible. This material world we have to work. Everyone is working. Jatkarosi, <clears throat> Jadasna, and we have to eat also. Uh, that is a fact. And Jadjuhosi, and for our uh, salvation or advancement, we do something, religious rituals, or attending church and temple or mosque, something there is in human society. <clears throat> and Dadasi, Jat, and charity. Everyone is uh, more or less charitably disposed, and he makes some charity uh, according to his capacity. The last is just tapasasi, and everyone uh, accepts some penance, voluntary penance in his life. Just tapasasi kontiya tat kurusamadarpana. No, Lord Krishna says all these activities. Your work, your charity, your eating, your penance, and your rituals, everything should be done for me. That's all. That is Krishna consciousness. Everything should be done for me. If you, if you want to work, well, work day and night, but you work for Krishna. Oh, that is Krishna consciousness. Uh, if you don't work, if you are simply eating, uh, if you are, your father has got money and you are eating, or uh, eat for Krishna. What is that? You offer the same to Krishna and eat palatable dishes. Krishna will not take away your dishes. Simply offer it. Jadashnasi. Jadjuhosi. Oh, you are trying to elevate yourself to a higher standard of life. Uh, just try to go back to Krishna, God. On it and try for that. Accept all kinds of austerities and penances. Yajjuhusi. Dadasi Jat. You are making some charity all right. Make charity for Krishna. Well, well, Krishna is God and He is very rich. Why shall I make charity to Krishna? No, Krishna says, Dadasi, give me that charity. Give me that charity. Krishna is not poor, but you are very proud that you try to make charity with Krishna's property. Uh, I am thinking, I come here uh, for a short duration of life. Say, I am born in uh, 100 years before or 50 years before, and I live here for 50 years and then go, go away. But I claim this is my property. Where from your property comes? Uh, before your birth, the property was there, and after your death, the property will remain there for thousands and millions of years. Where from you claim your property? 
You have no property. You are simply a ka- outcomer, a guest. So you should accept that this is Krishna's property, this is God's property. Uh, you are falsely claiming that it is your property. It is not your property. So when Krishna asks you that give me in charity, so that you are foolishly thinking that it is your money. Ah, Krishna is just trying to take your money so that your false consciousness may be dispelled. <laughs> Therefore, just like there is a, a nice story a Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj, he became a very strong king and he uh, nowadays, uh, as in the modern age, we find a strong government or a strong king, he simply uh, tries to conquer other countries. Uh, formerly, they were able to conquer other planets also. Uh, they are so powerful. So this Bali Maharaj became so powerful that he, he conquered uh, many of the higher planets of the demigods. Uh, so it became a disturbing element. So God as incarnation a Bhavana uh, He, uh, Bali Maharaj was also a grandson of a great devotee, Prahlad Maharaj. He had that uh, blood of devotional blood. He had some uh, devotion to Lord Krishna also. Uh, but at the same time, he was king. He was conquering life. He was king, making disturbance like that. So all the uh, demigods prayed to Krishna to settle up this thing. So Krishna as uh, Bhavan avatar. Incarnation of Bhavan, uh, a dwarf. Bhavan means dwarf. Uh, he went to Bali Maharaj and he was Brahmin. So, as a Brahmin boy, so he asked some charity because the Chatriyas, the kings, are meant for giving charity. So, uh, he was very much pleased to see that beautiful uh, dwarf boy. Uh, yes, what we want, I give him charity. Uh, but uh, he is spiritual master, so-called spiritual master. He could understand that uh, this boy is Vishnu, God himself. He has come to cheat uh, this Bali. So he asked his disciple, no, don't promise any charity to him because he is God. He will take your everything. <laughs> Once you agree to offer something, then he will take your salvation. Uh, God is uh, very intelligent. Uh, once you at- engage yourself in Krishna consciousness, there is no out, a way out. You cannot go out. <laughs> you cannot go out. Uh, uh, he's so kind. At, as once you become sincerely a surrendered soul to Krishna, then there is no way out. Uh, you have to be Krishna consciousness. You have to continue to be Krishna consciousness. You cannot do otherwise. Uh, so this uh, <coughs> guru, the so-called guru, he he thought, oh, he Krishna, the Bhaman God, if he takes away everything from my disciple, then how I shall live? Uh, I am living at his cost, and uh, <laughs> he becomes a beggar. Then I also become beggar. So he is very cautious. He said, oh, don't promise, don't promise. Why? Hey, little little boy, let me uh, give you something. No, no, he is not little man. He is God himself. Oh, he is God. So oh, then you ask me not to give in. And he formally taught me that everything should be given to God. Now God is at my door and you ask me not to give. Oh, I reject him. I don't want to a spiritual master like you. Uh, so any spiritual, so-called spiritual master is against God. He should be at once rejected, just like Bali Maharaj. So Bhani Maharaj is one of the Mahajan, uh, whose footprints we have to follow. Uh, he, he has given tacit example. Anyone who is against God, he should be at once rejected. Never mind what he is. Yes. <coughs> Never mind what he is. Uh, he should at once be rejected. Uh, this is the example of Bhani Maharaj. <coughs> so Krishna also approached him as a beggar. So here is also, <laughs> is uh, all right. You are very, very powerful king. You have got uh, much wealth. You are, you think that you are self, uh, that you are very much 
charitably disposed, all right, give me something. So Krishna is so kind. If you are in charity, live for charity. Charity aim for Krishna. Eating for Krishna. Working for Krishna. Sacrificing for Krishna. Everything for Krishna. Then you become perfect. Jat karo si jadāsna si jat juho si jadāsi jat. Jat tapasya si kaum piyo. Tapasya. Tapasya means penance. Oh, no, people are, they are, they are great scientists, great philosophers, they are thinkers, they are engaged in great penances, they are taking pains, many severe type of uh, pains for discovering something. Uh, we have got that tendency, just like we have discovered this atomic bomb uh, that requires some penance or austerity. But uh, Krishna says that don't discover atom bomb, but discover me. If you are so painstaking, if you are so great scientist, uh, discover me. Uh, uh, that is not possible. Uh, you can kill. That is, that is possible. So this is going on. Everything should be done for Krishna. Oh, that is the greatest oh, civilization. That is the perfection of civilization. That is peaceful civilization. Everything for God. Thank you very much. Okay.